Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It is time for another CM Covert Disclosures. This is the fourth one that they've done, and it's being presented by Magazine 2. Uh, what's also attached to this is actually a Q&A with BVVD, who is, of course, the game director of War Thunder. Uh, so if you want to check that out, we're going to cover it, but in a separate video. So this one will focus on the Covert Disclosures. The next video will have a look at the Q&A with good old BVVD. Now, to start with, uh, there is a new decal uh, that you can get access to, which is this one right here that you can see. And uh, basically, the code is valid until the 26th of December. They hid it in the article, but I'm just going to show you where it is, uh, just so you don't have to look. Basically, it's at the bottom of the covert disclosures, so it's there to kind of get you to read it all, but don't worry about it. It's right here. So it's no secret, please. What you do is you go to the Gadget store, you log into your account, you go to your profile, activate code area, and then type this in, and you'll get yourself the free decal. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, let's get going uh, with the covert disclosures. Uh, a lot of it is about what we've already seen and also a few other things that are coming. Uh, the first one is about, of course, the Firebirds major update and what ended up happening with it. It's kind of interesting because we were told at the time that, um, of course, the update wasn't delayed, everything was fine with it, everything was on track, so on and so forth, which is the general narrative which turns up. But if you actually read through what it says here, uh, basically it talks about the fact that uh, there was a lot of issues with the update and the dev team and also the QA team were working incredibly hard to try and fix them, uh, which is not usually something that you would find if everything was on schedule and everything was on track. So... Obviously, even when the update came out, there was a lot of issues with graphical stuff. Me, personally, I found a ton of issues uh, with the game, which uh, definitely made the enjoyment of it really, well, kind of sad, if I'm honest. Uh, it was the first update in a long time, pretty much since, I think it was like 1.27 or something like that, where fundamentally the game just didn't work for me. You know, I have a pretty good rig nowadays. I have a pretty good computer. I had to modify a ton of different settings to just make the game work. And even when I did that, an update came out the next day to fix a bunch of things, so I had to alter everything again, and it just didn't feel like I was having fun. So that's basically why I've been playing War Thunder and doing the event and doing a bunch of other stuff, but also I've been playing other things at the moment because of the fact I'm just waiting for War Thunder to get to a more stable position. And I feel like right now it is in a much more stable position, so we're going to put more time into it, especially coming into the new year. But it just sucked when that update came out because it's the first one in a long time where I just felt like it just didn't feel very good. So now it's in a lot better place. So if you were in a similar situation to me where you started the game on the update and, you know, your frames were dropping all over the place, things were activated which shouldn't have been activated, and even if you deactivated them, they still broke, <laughs> they still were activated, uh, the game should be a lot better, especially since we had a look at the change logs and a lot of the things uh, were set out. Now remember, if you are still having issues with the major update, make sure... Uh, to actually um, report them. You know, you have gadgen.net slash issues, which is kind of like their bug reporting platform. It's the main place where they find bugs and fix them. So get involved, you know. At the end of the day, it only benefits all of us when things are reported. They've also talked about a few of the new additions that they've added in, so the missile evaded message. So you analyze player feedback and decided to improve the feature. In some modes, it will be completely hidden, so SB, and in the rest, AB and RB, it will be possible to hide it or leave it at the player's discretion. Evasion statistics in the debuffering menu will remain for all modes, and we're working on the ability to hide or enable the message at the moment. If everything goes fine, this option will be available soon. And to be honest, I, I generally think it's kind of cool to see um, your defensive maneuvers, not just your offensive maneuvers. One of the problems that War Thunder had, I think, earlier this year or last year was they took away the proximity score that you would get for being near an enemy and basically dogfighting them or, you know, going after them. This meant that defensively flying was something that wasn't ever credited. And right now, 
we are actually going back to a step, or at least some of the game is starting to be credited again in the missile evaded message. Now, it'd be really cool if you could actually get something from this, whether it was a bit of SL or whether it was a bit of RP, but it, at least it's a step in the direction of showing that, you know, defensive maneuvers are something that's appreciated. Because right now, the only reason to do defensive maneuvers is to survive longer so you can do more offensive maneuvers. But as we know, when it comes to air battles, there are some times where the game is just kind of over and you have been <laughs> annihilated. Well, not you personally, but your team has been annihilated. And all you can do is try and defend and get back to the airfield to basically reset and go next. But the problem is, is you don't get anything for that period of defensive flying or, you know, trying to stay alive. So a lot of people just ram straight into to the enemy because you might as well because you might get lucky and get a kill also asking for soviet top tier <laughs> jet improvements this is something that i've seen quite a lot uh, over the last period of time people just once again this nation over here is much better than my nation i want new thing this is pretty much like a standard mentality that we have from major nations. It's something that's been going on for Germany for the longest time and also now for USSR. Turns out American aircraft are just better than the USSR aircraft that are in the game at the moment. And uh, basically what Gajin is saying is the statistics of US aircraft are in the lead with Soviet aircraft slightly behind. They're not significantly enough to where they require better uh, better weaponry. So, have we got to a point where we're allowed to change the narrative of American players? Because the, the, the narrative of American players, as always, has just been American players are stupid. And obviously, this is wrong. Because labeling a whole part of the player base as stupid is just ridiculous. Makes absolutely no sense. But at the same time... If you have a look at these stats, if we want to flip this around, maybe we can start other narratives. Maybe just Soviet players are just stupid. How about we just do that? How about we continue these silly narratives which make absolutely no sense and why collectivization of things is very, very silly? But anyway... U.S. aircraft are doing better than everybody else. They have the best weaponry, they have the best multi-role capabilities, they can do whatever they want. And then it says, from looking at the preliminary data, the addition of advanced weaponry as suggested by players would tip the scales drastically in the other direction. Talking about the RVVMD close-range missile, and also brought up was the R-77-1 medium-range missiles. Though regarding energy, these don't differ much from the R-77 already in the game. So, as usual, people are asking for more power because they want the things that they play to be more powerful than everybody else. This is a standard PvP thing. This is just what happens all the time. People want the best stuff. So, these types of opinions should be put over here in a box. And you should say, we appreciate the feedback. We're going to go with the statistics. Because... When it comes to War Thunder nowadays, especially with how a lot of the nations are set up, you now have people who are very much dedicated to only playing a single nation because there's so many vehicles in the game to research, so many vehicles in the game to get through, they only have time to be able to play one nation. So if they pick a damp squib, or maybe they pick a nation which they're told is really good, and then they get to the top tier because they finally get there after like six months or a year, the top tier could have completely changed and got shifted, and they have been shafted. So now they're just going to want the better stuff. This would be exactly the same as if, let's say, a British player was like, no, I need better things than Americans because my vehicles are worse. Or a Swedish player saying the same thing. The only reason that this is being highlighted is because America and USSR are two of the most played nations, therefore each side wants better things than the other side. This has happened in all of War Thunder's history. It is a completely worthless thing to discuss because as we know, when it comes to updates and also just when it comes to these things, they will tip the scale of the balance over and over again to favor different sides against each other. That's just how it works. Then we have the newly added helicopters lacking the new heli damage model. Or how, how about just any of the other helicopters in the game that weren't uh, new? How, how about those? The devs are working on this. Updated heli DMs will be coming in the future for the helis released in the Firebird's major updates. Well, as I said, why, why we are... One of the largest things that was in 
the roadmap of 2024 for me was the heli rework. Because as we all know, helicopters for the longest time were allowed to get away with completely ridiculous stuff. And it's been really nice to see that they've added in some of these new heli damage models. The problem is, is the simple fact that they're not there yet, are they? They're, there's only a few vehicles, a minority of helicopters, that have these updated damage models. Now, I don't count them literally just adding systems to the fuselage, and then if you damage the fuselage, it knocks out systems. I mean fully updated damage models, very similar to ground vehicles. And I'm hoping that soon a lot of those come in because then we can have parity across the board. Then we don't have certain helicopters being favored over others because they can survive more than others because of these systems not being implemented in the game. I just hope that this can be rectified because it isn't just from a ground point of view. It's the simple fact that now you have an imbalance between the helicopters themselves and that needs to be rectified because that is going to screw the system statistics that is going to screw with matchmaking it's going to screw with everything and that is a problem now this part kind of irks me a bit right all of the other stuff sounds very positive you know the balance of the game helicopter stuff all of these things are very important new player card the goal of it this right maybe maybe i'm just not in tune with the goal okay may and that's fine you know sometimes as an individual you can like just not agree with what's going on. And I feel like that's how it, I see this. When the devs first started working on the new player card, the goal in mind was to make it more simplistic and without information overload, which is why the player card only has one showcase and information is spread out rather than it all being in one place. The devs also wanted player cards to be unique and special to each player, with the ability to showcase cool achievements that we, they've earned, or show off a rare vehicle that they're proud of, for example. Which all sounds great, but none of those features are in the game. Uh, so, you know, we can we can talk about them when they're here. Uh, we can't talk about them since they're not here yet. Um, the simplistic idea. I'm sick of it. I'm I'm sick of it. I don't I don't know if, as I said, if this is just a me thing. War Thunder is a game where there's a ton of information about it. Whether it's the history of the vehicles, whether it's how they work in the game, whether it's how many vehicles are in the game. One of the things that's touted so much about War Thunder is the massive player base and the massive amount of vehicles and the massive amount of different playstyles and the different nations that you can play and all of the information that goes into that. And you're telling me that from that, you have a set of people who want the profile and want that information to be more simplistic. So you can't see as much information on a board. I do not believe that. I have not met a simple person, uh, not a simple, sorry, a single person who has turned around to me and said, you know what? I want my profile to show less information. I want people to know less about me. I want to know less about myself. Now, the way that you actually show the information, of course, that can change, that can move around. But withdrawing information because of an information overload is insane, especially when you've been adding more information in different areas of the game. The War Thunder Wiki, for example, the uh, stat cards, uh, the x-rays, the armor, all of these things, the protection analysis, they've all been upgraded to have more information, e.g. overload to them. But for some reason, that's fine. But for the profile, no, we need it to be more simplistic. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's like all of these rebrands that all of these different um, companies are doing. They're all going back to simplistic logos that are just boring, right? They're just boring. And the idea is so there's commonality between them. So that is seen as the bog standard thing. And you get used to that being the bog standard thing, right? Because it's simplistic. It's simple. It's there. In a game of War Thunder where you've already chosen to play it and already chosen to have a look at everything that is on offer, the simplistic approach doesn't work for the profile. For other areas of the UI where you want to make it simplistic and easy to get involved with, sure, not with the profile. The profile is a mirror of what the person is. It is their customization. It is their personality in the game. And what you've done by making it more simplistic is making the player feel like they have been minimized. That's the problem that you've done, right? So now you're basically going to continue down that road 
and making the player feel more simplistic. That's not a good thing. That's not something that should happen, right? Now, when it comes to the reflection of it, when the major update released, one of the main talking points was the new player card, and we relayed this information to the dev team. In hindsight, the team realizes that releasing the player card with missing information beforehand was not very effective. Yeah, you could say that. Our aim was to release new player card showcases gradually, rather than all at once, as many of them take a while to program and implement into the game, as there is a lot of old and intricate data to handle. After design, implementing such a card takes a considerable amount of time with the GUI designers, and handling a huge amount of historic data is a careful process. We're going to learn from this. Yeah, um, as, as we said before, as we've said a few times now, certain features, it's okay to build them up over time, right? Whether it's radar, whether it's RWR, whether it's like mechanics in the game, building those up is very important. When you take the thing, which is basically, as I said, the personality of the player in the game, something that they can tie themselves to, and you remove it and don't replace it with anything, that's never going to work. So you need to take more time with these things to understand the personal aspect of it. It isn't just about it being a video game. It's about the person's, like, look at themselves in the game, right? It's the same with stuff like avatars and things like that. That's why uh, stuff like, you know, customization is so important in MMOs in general. You know, it isn't just the fact that, oh, look, shiny thing. It's because it is a vision of yourself in the game. It's why people really like either going for something where they see themselves as like a certain idea or they go completely anti of that. Whereas in War Thunder, you can't do either. You just have to basically show your achievements. It's the only part of the game that shows the history of what you have done in War Thunder. It's the only foundation that you have in the game and they cut most of it. That's why people are annoyed. Like, <laughs> and hopefully they add them back over time. But please stop trying to make it simplistic. You don't have to. You don't have to make it simplistic. You actually have to make it more enjoyable to see, and you have to add in all of the elements that were there previously, okay? Because people are used to that, and it's part of who they are, right? We had a lengthy discussion with the devs about its design based on feedback. We considered that it could be rolled back to the old one in the meantime, while more features were added. However, this was not plausible due to technical reasons and the fact we'd have to maintain the new and old version, causing further delays. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Like, you've, you've made the decision. It, it's, you know, you've, you've sat on the hill. It's now time to deal with the storm. We understand the feedback about its design and display of information, but as of now, the devs will keep it in terms of layout. Having said this, we'll be adding the missing information gradually but the current layout and display of information on the player card will remain how it is. Fantastic. In total, the devs have more than a dozen different showcases planned, which will be added over time. If developed in the time for the December major update, the following five showcases are planned to be added. However, just a warning that there is a chance this may not make it in December, which means they'll come sometime in early 2025 instead. How about you just add back the amount of vehicles that people have researched and the amount of vehicles that they've spaded in terms of each nation. How about that? How about you just add back the little flags? There you go. Vehicle collector shows the total number of vehicles on your account and separately for each nation. So they've done this, but they've got rid of the spading stuff. So once again, you are taking something that fundamentally worked, you are taking something that was part of a player's personality in the game, and you are simplifying it. You don't have to. You don't have to, okay? You don't. You could just add in the same information again, and it would be fine. So yeah. Let's see the next simplification. Atomic Ace, unlocked when receiving the Doomsday Award, shows the total number of awards received. We plan to add all previously received rewards to the counter too. So this is just amount of bombs dropped. This is not great because, you know, a lot of people don't play in the area of nuclear bombs, but I suppose the idea is the player profiles are more for people who play the game more, and therefore, uh, you know, you go ahead with it. My major issue with this is the idea of, you know, dropping nukes is like this huge... A uh, thing that people are going to focus on now, which I'm sure some people do already, but it's also going to set an inferiority 
between different players and once again like dropping nukes is uh definitely a show of skill but also it is a show of abusing game mechanics or just getting lucky and at the same time another part of it is since the most recent update people are really going to struggle with certain machines to even play the game so having this like slapped in your face that oh this other person has done really well is not probably the best idea also peacemaker is basically just when you shoot down nukes uh, so they don't get dropped. Battle hardened. Uh, you can choose one of the game modes. For this mode, the player's skill dependent statistics for the last month and place in the leaderboard by PvP rating will be shown. Number of battles, percentage of victories, average relative position, player KD, AI KD, average score, yada yada yada. Basically all the stuff that was in the old profile, which was already there, but now in a larger font and made to look more simplistic. So basically all you've done is you've taken all of the old stuff, removed a bunch of it, and then just made it larger to look at. So now you have to click through more tabs to see things, or you've made it so people have to pick and choose what they want to show instead of all the information. So now, now what people have to do is just go to the website and search players and go and have a look at all of the statistics instead. How weird. Favorite vehicle. Uh, you can choose one vehicle from your collection and the modes. For this vehicle in the selected mode, the statistics on the service record menu will be shown. Number of battles, uh, number of victories, number of spawns, deaths, and kills. This is just an AI, if, if this is real. Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> god damn. Uh, we've got a bot farmer here. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm, I mean, that's nice, but once again... I suppose this is something which you can see, which wasn't there before, which is great, but you'll have to remove all of the other stuff for it too. Also, there are some more showcases planned that will likely be added in the spring. So Achievement Hunter, Squadron Warrior, uh, Medalist, Title Collector, Decal Collector, Decorator Collector, Ace of Spades, all of that stuff. So you'll be able to customize your profile more, but as was said, these may not even come in this update, which is probably the most sad for people. So, uh, profile background and avatar frame customization. So they're finally adding in uh, some profile backgrounds and avatar frames. Uh, this is something that I've talked about in the past. I'm hoping that what this new profile does is it means that we can start getting some kind of prestige system in the game, which is something that at least I've talked about for a while, and I think would be incredibly positive for the game. Um, hopefully um, that will be something that's focused on after all of this profile stuff is done. Generally, when you update systems such as this profile, normally there are other additions that come for it. Right now, we haven't really seen the other additions. We've just seen stuff removed. So hopefully that is something that happens. There'll be seven free profile backgrounds that a player can choose from and ways to get other ones through events and also for Golden Eagles. So it isn't a surprise they're doing this. I mean, we've talked about expanding the battle pass, expanding the events, and this was one of the ways that at least we discussed. As mentioned above, no promises. If this will come in the December major, they may be pushed back to early 2025, but they're in the works. Also, avatar frames will be added as well, perhaps in the December major as well. Just to say in the future, right? Just, just say in the future. <laughs> because if if because you're getting people's hopes up that all this stuff is going to be added in December, but it it's probably not right because unfortunately with this roadmap, since the the last part of the roadmap, the summer 2024 part, all of the things that have been added have been piecemeal. So just start hedging your bets here. When they're first added, they'll also be free with some paid ones, ranging from 500 to 1000 GE, prices might change, much like how profile icons work. As mentioned already, we can't say for sure whether they'll be ready. Yes, I know, you keep saying that. Just say in the future. Just say in the future, right? You don't, you don't have to add any, just say in the future. Just please stop putting in these clarifications so people don't get annoyed. People are going to get annoyed regardless. <laughs> so like I, I get why you're doing it but it's not gonna work okay uh kv7 versus kv7 event reflections this is funny um the dev team and cm team collaborated on this event to create it together oh dear uh we experimented with a new type of event whereby there was the same type of vehicle versus itself we wanted to do something fun and unique for the game's 12th anniversary here which was the main reason there was only 12 IF7s given away. No, it isn't. Um, please don't, please don't do this. Uh, please, please don't, um, please don't say things like this. 
uh, because there's no way of actually working out whether this is true. And also, you can have a whole team of people there who all believe this is true, but unfortunately, they're not the decision maker. The reason why there was only 12 IS-7s is because they didn't want to give away more. They could have done 120, they could have done 1,200, they could have done 12,000. They could have done 100,000, they could have done whatever number that was decided. The reason why 12 was decided was so it doesn't screw up the market and also it doesn't piss off people who did the event in the first place. So please, let's not do this, okay? Let's not do this. We've collected feedback on this event and we will look to improve similar ones in the future. They may or may not return in some aspect, perhaps as a fun little weekend edition or even not at all. No promises for us on this. Well, that's true because you don't make these decisions. We're still analyzing and thinking of ways to improve them and make them as fun as possible without the feeling of a marathon. Thanks to everyone who participated in this event and left feedback on it and congratulations to the 12 i7 winners. Yeah, well done. Good stuff. Um, I, I personally didn't take part in this event because I already had the i7 and I also didn't want to really play it. Uh, the KV-7 is not really a vehicle that sets up against itself. It was also an arcade game mode, which is fine, but it also means people just aim for weak spots, and it's whoever just has the best ping can fire first, so it's not really something I was that interested in. Um, there are general ways of doing these types of events that would be a lot better. Um, instead of just score, you could have done some cool challenges to do with the KV-7 over like a period of time, um, in standard battles, but it's a levy. Like, we'll, we'll see what kind of goes on in the future with them. It's not really something that I put a lot of thought into. Um, I generally put more thought into the main events that are in the game. These minor events are fine, but the major problem with them is, of course, the limitations of the prizes, um, because, once again, uh, it's another... Um, aggressive push into gambling. It's another way of getting people used to the raffle system and also used to the gambling system overall, uh, which is inherently bad um, in terms of the game. And we're seeing it ever encroaching on every other part of the game, whether it's with the SL or GE boxes, whether it's with the item boxes, whether it's with even the other events with the RNG modifications that they're adding to things. So it's just another encroachment of that, and also even just the esports stuff with the esports boxes, where everything is just becoming RNG. Uh, so with these events, that's my main issue. Direct and uh, direct prizes, uh, which or permanent prizes, which you get to keep by the end of it. Imagine if they did this event, but also there was just a decal involved. Or imagine, you know, there was a title. Or you were guaranteed to get a vehicle. Wouldn't that be nice if you did this extra thing? But unfortunately, that's not the case. And that's why generally I'm against these types of events. When an award is an RNG award, I am not interested. And it's just because of the fact that it's pushing this idea which is going to make the game worse in terms of people's enjoyment. Because for everybody who wins, there are hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands, that feel like they've lost. And that is not good for the game. That is how you get pessimism, that's how you get people who are annoyed, and that's how you get people who generally throw around negative stuff with the game. And after this event, that's exactly what you saw. You saw a lot of annoyance, you saw a lot of aggression, and it has continued because of the update. And that sucks, because War Thunder is a fantastic game. It's a game to be completely optimistic about, and constantly adds really cool stuff, and constantly adds, you know, really cool vehicles and everything, and something I've enjoyed for many years, but with events that are based around RNG, that are based around these types of ideas, it's only going to annoy people. Generally, it's nice to see this covert disclosures. Um, I will once again like to remind you that community managers don't make any decisions when it comes to the game and also should not make any decisions when it comes to the game. Um, so hopefully uh, that can continue. We also have a Q&A with BVVD, which we'll look at soon. As always, let me know what you think about these things and I will see you next time. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontecovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem Aslan, 
Uncle Bean and Derek R for supporting the channel.